What's happening guys, Scott from A Hornet's Nest and welcome back to episode eight of Tutorial Tuesday. It is so good to see you. And it's our final episode of 2023. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas with your family and friends and all those close to you. And I hope you have a wonderful new year coming up. So today to finish the year off strong, let's go into all things circuit boards and we are going to fix and replace the electrical panel circuit board that I created in season one. And to help out with that, our friends at PCBWay are supporting us to show you how to design, manufacture and implement your own circuit boards into your cockpits at home. And to do that, we're gonna be using the PCB integration within Fusion 360, that way we're not using two separate programs. I used to use Autodesk Eagle, but since I found out that they were possibly not gonna be around from 2026, I thought, why not make the jump into Fusion and learn its own system? So let's get into it and open up Fusion 360. So let's go and zoom into the electrical panel and see what we're working with. We're gonna be replacing my old circuit board which integrated the battery gauge into just the three switches to keep it a simple system. We have three switches, the left generator, the battery and the right generator. The left and right gens are two position switches, they're just on and off and our battery switch is a three position on, off and override. Before we start creating the circuit board, let's get some order into our system. That way, every single circuit board you make has the same structure. And what we want to do is create a new folder within the data panel. And we're going to call this elect PCB. Everything we save into that folder just has to do with the electrical panel's PCB. And later on, you'll see why we do that. Now we want to open up that folder. So any changes and save files will save into that folder. So now what we want to do is go and view the back of the panel so we can go and create a circuit board that harnesses these two screw holes here because we're going to use 50 millimeter standoffs to actually mount the PCB. That way it's nicely structured and you can create a modular system. So let's get on into the back of the panel and go and create a new sketch. Up in the toolbar at the top, create sketch and click the face you want. We now want to go and click the rectangle tool and I want to go and create a rectangle that encloses these two holes and it's going to be 90 millimeters by 20 millimeters. That way we know that the circuit board is going to be nice and compact and it's not going to foul on any of the supporting structure around the system. And we're going to press finish sketch. That's about it. That is as simple as creating the design of a circuit board is. So from now on, we're just purely focusing on creating the actual schematic and the board. So to create the board, you want to click the create drop down arrow all the way down to the bottom, create PCB, and we want to create an independent PCB. It creates a 3D PCB document from the selected sketch or face. It's very similar to extruding. You now just want to go and select all the profiles that you want your PCB to be. Now, a trick with working on the back face of an already made structure is when Fusion sees that sketch, it now just builds from the bottom to the top. So anything extruding away from that sketch is the top. If I make a little bit of a view adjustment, you can see that the circuit board extrudes away. The top face in Fusion's mind is this face that is furthest away. We don't really want that because we want the top of the circuit board to be similar to the top of the panels. That way everything aligns. So if you're in this position, all you have to do is press flip Z axis. If you're building a circuit board from scratch and you're on the top face already, that doesn't matter. This is purely for those that are building circuit boards onto already existing structures. And we want to press OK. And there we have it. We have our circuit board ready to go. We're going to reopen up the data panel here just so you can see what's being saved and how it's being saved. Because we need to go and press save and call this 3D model. And the reason I can create such a generic name like that is because it's in the folder of elect PCB. I'm going to press save and it will load up here as a 3D model. So now that we've got the three dimensional model built, we can now go and create an electronics design file by pressing the file at the top left, new electronics design. What this file is, is essentially a display folder. It's got no functionality in building your board. All it does is compile all the data into one easy to reference document. You can see that it's blank and we will fill all the blanks in very soon. But the first thing we need to do is save and save it as electronics design. 
The first thing we have to do with electronics design is create a schematic. A schematic isn't a topographical map of how the board's going to be laid out. That's going to be saved for later. A schematic is a ideas map. It shows inputs, processes, and outputs. It's easy to understand so you can give that to anyone and they can create their own circuit board purely from a schematic. To do that, we're going to click new schematic and it's going to load up the schematic page. Don't get overwhelmed on how complicated this looks. I'm going to show you how easy it is because you really just got to follow the rule of you only need to know 20% of a subject to be 80% good at it. So we're going to teach you that first 20% and then you can build on that at home. First thing we're doing is we're pressing save and we're naming it schematic. So we've got a schematic, which is an ideas map. We've got a three dimensional model so we can render it and see how it fits back in our system. All we need now is the file that allows us to place components on that board and wire them all up. To do that, we're gonna go back to our 3D model and we're gonna click push to 2D PCB. It's gonna say there is no linked PCB 2D document. Uh, it's gonna ask if you wanna continue. You're gonna select yes and it's gonna load up the 2D file. Now this looks even more complicated, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to create the circuit board and you're gonna realize how simple it is. But well, where is our 2D PCB? Well, if we zoom out a little, you're gonna see it all the way down here in the bottom right. And that's just because that's where it is in the massive Hornet's Nest side console files. It references the exact X and Y coordinates of that file. We're now gonna press save and we're gonna call this 2D PCB. That way it's easy to understand. Great. The next thing we need to do to finalize all the admin is go back to our electronics design file. We're gonna click at the top here, reference a PCB document and 2D PCB shows. But let's click back into electronics design and have a look what we see. Top left window will show the schematic. Top right will show the 2D version of your document and the bottom two panes will show the top and bottom 3D render. We are pretty much ready to go. So all we have to do now is work from the schematic into the 2D document and then render the file. Alrighty, so what we've got to do now is draw a schematic, take that into the 2D PCB so we can place all our components and then we can push that as a 3D render. So to start getting into the actual nitty gritty of the program, let's go and click our schematic tab at the top. It's gonna open up a blank sketch that we see here. Let's go and hide the data panel, which is just the left-hand side file panel by clicking these nine squares. So it looks a bit complicated, but like I said, we only need to know 20% of something to be 80% good at it. And today I'm showing you that 20%. All we're gonna do is place components, wire them up, take them into the 2D PCB, place them, and then export them. So to place a component, because you can't have a circuit without components, you wanna to go to the top of your toolbar, and there is a icon that looks like building blocks with a plus. That's place component or it's the hotkey A. If you look at this side panel while we press the hotkey A, you see it automatically changes to the place components menu. Under filter, you can search for components or under libraries, you can search them through the library themselves. We're gonna go and place some pin headers on our circuit. And these are these male header pins that connect the switches to the board. The thing I love about them the most is they're reversible. There's no polarity to them. So if you go and wire the lugs up in a reverse order, you just flick the connection around and it's gonna work properly. Now these are a default item in the Fusion 360 or Eagle library. And to get them, all you have to do is search pin HD. And it's gonna come up with an assortment of pin headers. Let's drag the component column out of it so you can read the name. And it goes pin HD one by one. It is one row by one column. Pin HD one by 13 is one row, 13 columns or 13 pins in that row. We've got the library name and then we can see we have a variant. Well, we wanna go and place a two pin header for the left gen and right gen. So we wanna grab the pin HD one by two. It's got a variant of slash 90. That shows that there is a variant option. So you want to click the drop down arrow and we want to click the straight up version. We don't want the 90 degree pin headers, but if you click them, they have the same footprint. So it's really not going to matter, but we want our 3D render to look nice as well. 
double click on the component and you'll see that it will stay attached to your mouse. You can drag it around, it's not going anywhere. And as you click and drop it, it's gonna remain attached. That way you can go and drop multiple of the same component. In the top right of your sketch, you'll see some rotation and mirror command. You can either click these buttons or use the mouse commands of middle mouse button to mirror and right mouse button to rotate. In the center of the screen, you can see a small crosshair. That's just the origin. It's where the coordinates of the schematic is zero and zero. Generally, I'll place all inputs to the left of the origin. In the middle, I'll place all the processes like multiplexes, chips, Arduinos, and then on the right, I'll place outputs. That way it kind of flows nicely. The schematic isn't a topographical map of the board. It is purely a ideas map. That way you can give this schematic to anyone and they will know what they need to build and they will go and place the components themselves. So let's go and place our first connector towards the left. And we know we need two, so let's go and drop a second one as well. To remove it off your mouse, all you gotta do is press escape once. We now need a three pin connector for the battery switch. So we're gonna find pin header one by three. We're gonna select the straight up variant and we're gonna place that there as well. Let's give a bit of order to this and highlight JP3 and we're gonna drag it into the middle and we're gonna put JP2 on the bottom. That way it kind of looks like our circuit board and it just creates a bit of order so we know where to look for stuff. Now it's simple, we've got three connectors, but when you get complicated schematics, you want this to run seamlessly. Great, don't get in the habit of just leaving the default names. Remember to name your components and you can use that in the connect toolbar, which is still in the design profile. You can either press M as a hotkey or you can click the D1 tool at the top or you can right click the red crosshair on the symbol and click name. And we're gonna call this left gen. And you'll notice I use a full stop. That's just because you can't use the space character in a, an electrical diagram. That switch, we can call this one right gen. Great, now we've got inputs, we need an output because we want an output to go to Arduino. If we look at the back of the circuit board, I've actually got these JST connectors. They're a little bit more secure than the DuPont connectors. They've got a bit of a click to them. The reason I have two, one is for the battery gauge and the other is to the CDU. I'm gonna recreate this as a simple PCB because I've got a plan in mind for the electrical gauge. So we're only gonna need one. But how many pins do we need? Well, we've got one pin on the left gen, two signal pins on the battery switch, and one on the right gen. So that's four signal pins. But we do need to connect our circuit board to the same ground as Arduino, so we're gonna need a pin for that as well. So we're gonna need five pins. If we remove the pin HD from the filter, we can go all libraries, and I'm gonna use a custom library called CONJSTPH. The PH is just the designator for a two millimeter pitch JST connector. The reason I'm not using the standard 0.1 or the XH is because I want these to be different to the DuPont connectors. That way I'm never gonna connect them to the wrong circuitry holes. So we're gonna click CON JST PH. And now we're gonna go down to the B5B connector, which is the five pin connector. I can see I've got a symbol a footprint and a 3D model down at the bottom. Double clicking the connector and we just go and place this towards the right of the origin. Pressing escape so we can uh, remove that from our mouse. We can now go and bring everything a little bit closer since we're actually not creating that complex of a circuit. Great. Well, we've placed our components. Let's go and connect our components and we're going to be using a term called a net. A net is really just a a fictional digital wire. It connects components of the same electrical activity. You'd connect all the five volts to a net. You'd connect the ground to a net. You'd connect 12 volts to a net. And sometimes you might even, especially with multiplexes, connect all the signal pins to the same net. It just picture a net as a wire. And to do that, we're gonna to go to the connect panel. There is a green line here and we've got net. Or you can use the hotkey R. Well, let's go and connect all the ground pins of our switches first. And I like to always connect the ground on my switches to the middle pin 
and it's pin 2. No matter what type of switch it is, pin 2 will always be my ground. We've got net selected, and we can hover over 2, and we get a greeny teal circle over the pin. That shows it's ready to connect. Click once, it anchors to the pin. Click again to draw another anchor point, and then one down here. Press escape to remove it off your mouse, and now we've got to create our first wire. We now want to connect pin 2 on a battery switch, and you can see it creates a junction dot. That shows that it's connected to the line. If we go and select pin 1 of the battery switch and just draw over the top, it doesn't create the dot, showing that it is bypassing that net. And we're just going to connect pin 2 of the right gen as well. Well, how do we tell Fusion that this is a ground? Well, let's go all libraries. You've got, you've got this one as well. Filter ground, GND, and I like to use the ground bar. It looks like an upside down T. And we're gonna double click and place it at the bottom. It wants a value for that net now, and it's just gonna be labeled ground. The value for a net is just the name of the net. That way you can easily reference it. It's gonna give you a warning, rename net segment to supply pin ground, yes, great. Well, it's hanging on my mouse. Let's go and put one here by the JST connector because we know we're going to need it later. And press escape. Great. So let's go and connect pin 1 to ground. Easy. Look at that. Done. Now there are two ways we can go and connect components. We want to create a wire or a trace between the left gen and a pin on the connector. Well, we can either hardwire it, which is creating a net, clicking the pin and anchoring it and literally connecting a road between it. Now, for such a simple schematic, that's not too complex. It, it looks fairly neat, but can you imagine if we had 60 components here, lots of resistors, lots of LEDs, lots of push buttons, it's gonna get really complex real quick. So another way we can connect it is using the same philosophy that what ground is doing, because these aren't connected, but they share a common name. So let's go. Shuffle that one there, so we've got a bit of space. Click net, just draw a short net out of the battery switch. And we're gonna draw a short net out of pin three. We're going to go to name, D1 or N. We're gonna click the net we just created, and we're gonna call it bat one. Great. And that creates a name. We want that to connect to pin three, so we're going to call pin 3, it's net, that one. And it's going to ask, do you want to connect n dollar sign 3 or net number 3 to bat 1? Yes. Great. And we're going to go to pin 3. What do you think we're going to call pin 3? We're going to call it bat 3. That way we know it is the third signal coming out of the bat switch. And we're going to name a net onto pin 4 the same. And you can do this for as pretty much everything else in your circuit. Look at that. We have pretty much wired up our circuit and we're probably not gonna have to come back to this unless we wanna make changes. So don't close your circuit diagram, keep it open, but we are now gonna to go to the 2D PCB document. So what we've got here now is the 2D PCB looking down on the circuit board, almost as if our circuit board is in that orientation. So we've got the left gens on this side, we've got right gens here, and we've got the battery switch in the middle. Instead of having a red crosshair in the symbol, we've got a yellow crosshair in the footprint. And these are called footprints. It's the footprint of the component. Click and hold on the crosshair and you can use the same mouse commands as in the schematic to be able to move these around. I'm gonna right click twice and I'm gonna put the left gen here. The reason I right clicked a couple of times is I wanna put pin one at the top and pin two down below. I want all my pin ones to read up here, two and three. That way you don't have a weird rat's nest of wires. Let's move our battery switch to here. And all the yellow lines that you see are air wires. It is Fusion saying, hey, these two pins are connected via a net, but you haven't routed them together yet. So they're quite, quite helpful in finding where missing connections are. 
And we want to go right gen. So, actually, let's go back in the schematic quickly and let's just go and rename this one to two dot CDU. We'll use CDU as a central data unit. Two Arduino sounds too long. Might not print nicely. Cool. 2D CDU. And we want to place the 2D CDU on the back. We don't want to place it on the top layer. Everything we've been placing is on the top layer. So to do that, click and hold CDU so you can drag it around. Use your middle mouse button to mirror. Now it reads backwards because it's on the back side of the PCB. The nice thing is you can kind of just see through it and we'll just place it there. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Well, we've placed all the components. Now let's go and route the components or create the trace between them. And to do that, first we have created our traces on the top side. So at the top left here, you want to click top, it's a red trace, and we want to go route manual. There are other options that you can use such as auto router, but for something as simple as this, let's just do it by ourselves and see the fundamentals. We want to click n dollar sign one. Now the reason it says n dollar sign one compared to these lovely labels of bat one and bat three is we hardwired those two points together. Fusion didn't give us an option to name it. We can go back in the schematic and name it if you want, but that's why. So if you see a lot of weird names, give them a name, uh, make them feel special. Cool, we're gonna up here in the route column, we're gonna click route in the route column. We want our trace width to be six mil. It's a pretty good width for most circuit board manufacturers as well as having a good signal. We wanna zoom in to see the middle of the footprint and we're gonna click on n dollar sign one. And you can see it anchors to it. The air wire becomes a little bit brighter than the remaining and it shows where it needs to go. Let's anchor it down there. Drag it along here and then up into n dollar sign one. Great. Well, let's go and route the rest. We've got battery switch one. We can go here. Battery switch three. Well, I could kind of worm battery switch three through those pins and around, but it's not really nice. And I could, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just switch these two pins so they look nice. Go back into the schematic. Delete, delete, and I just want to change the way they were done. So battery switch three connects up here, and bat one here. I want my circuit board to look nice. It's, you can have a functional circuit board, but it doesn't look nice, and that's not cool at all. Great, back into the 2D PCB route manual. It's left that little remainder bit just because I didn't delete it. You can start from there, go to pin four, battery to pin three. And the right gen comes nicely down here, like that, cool. Actually, I don't like that. You see how we've got a really tight corner there? Try avoid those. So if you wanna move your trace once it's placed, click the trace with the left mouse button and then you can just click and drag. Hey, look at that. And let's make it all look nice. Let it all join. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. That looks quite nice. Maybe I can even, oh, there we go. This is now where your OCD comes in because it's gonna be like, oh man, you could drive yourself mental trying to create the perfect looking board. Now, all we gotta do is connect the ground. And instead of creating a wire that connects every single ground together, just imagine if you were doing the comms panel on the Hornet, there's so many grounds on there that it would be an absolute nightmare to try to trace it. Use polygon, polygon pour. It's gonna create a solid sheet of copper that all the grounds can tap into with little fingers. And those fingers are called thermals. So we're gonna go polygon. We're still using 45s, solid fill style, and we want thermals. Go ahead and change your thermal width to 12. I find that's a much nicer thermal width for your power and ground planes. Now, before we do it, signal name ground, because we want to connect onto the ground pins and we want to change it to the bottom. Put all your ground planes on the bottom. But hey, what do I know? There's a humble, humble Hornet pit designer. I don't actually have a degree in electronics design, so. Just grab it and drag it out. It'll, it'll work itself out eventually. There we go. Look at that. 
Beautiful. And can you see here with the ground pin, it's created these thermals, little fingers that tap into the ground plane layer. To see our red, all we just gotta do is select the top layer. Now, if you want to have a bit of a visual representation of what is on the bottom, what is on the top, go here to Design Manager, All Components, scroll down a little and you can see the battery switch is on the top, left gen is on the top, two CDU is on the bottom. So we've pretty much got a functional circuit board. You could go and send this off now and it's gonna come back and work. It's very easy how quickly you can make a functional circuit board. But here at a hornet's nest, we want things to look cool. So let's press the hotkey T for text. And we're gonna just add a couple of titles in. Elect panel V 1.0, 70 mil text height is fine. And we want it to be on the silk screen at the top, layer 21. We're just gonna go and place that there. Don't have text too close to where the board's cutting, but um, don't feel too limited by it either. I'm gonna change the next line to BIOS compatible. And let's make this 40 mil. Just so I know that this panel is DCS BIOS compatible because it doesn't have any pull down resistors. And final one I like to do is put the arrow or shift six, it gives a little arrow upwards, front, top. And I'm just gonna place this in the top right corner. That way I know that I'm looking at the top of the panel and that needs to point to the front of the cockpit. That way it mounts correctly. We're pretty, we're pretty much done. It looks cool. We've got left gen, bat switch, right gen. If for some reason you are seeing the values, just come down to your design manager and hide values top and values bottom. That's all it is. And you don't need the value of your resistors on that either because you will have a bill of materials that will tell you what resistor one is, what resistor two is. Don't clutter your circuit board with unnecessary data. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, let's go one last thing, and this is purely a thing I like to do. We go automation, ULP, and we're gonna import a BMP file. It's a picture file of my certification logo. That way, anyone that receives the circuit board knows that it was designed and built by me. So recapping what we've done, we've gone and created a schematic, we've connected it using nets in the schematic, we've placed the components, we've created a bit of text with the hotkey T, and now we have a full functional, really good looking circuit board. Let's go and press save. And now we're gonna use this button in the top left, push to 3D PCB. Preset, recommended. The only thing it's not gonna show here is the BNP logo because it doesn't know how to read the 200 layer series but it's gonna have all the rest of our text on. We're gonna go push. Hey, and look at that. That is our three-dimensional render of our very first circuit board. We've got our pins and we've got our JSD connector there at the bottom. And it even includes showing where the thermals are. So we can go press save. And we're gonna open that up in our Hornet's Nest side consoles folder so we can see what it looks like up against our panels. Open up the show data panel, and we're gonna go and drag the 3D model into Fusion. Using the Z origin uh, arrow, we're just gonna drag it down by 50 mil. So that's how long our standoff is. Press okay. And there is our circuit board underneath our panel. And that is very cool. Well, let's not just keep it in the 3D space. Let's actually manufacture it. To do that, we need to go back to our 2D PCB and we need to export it as a Gerber file. It's the standard file format that circuit board companies can use to go and design your file. And this is where our sponsor PCBWay comes in because I'm gonna be using them to design all of our circuit boards for the pit. They're an incredible company at a reasonable price offering a phenomenal amount of services all the way from circuit board design to assembly, 3D printing, as well as manufacturing such as CNC milling. So let's go and create the Gerber files for them. We're gonna go manufacturing. I'm gonna click the second one from the left, CAM processor. CAM is short for computer aided manufacturing. In the top left, we wanna select job file. We wanna go local CAM jobs, example, 
example too late. This is how simple it is. Fusion has this ready for you to go. It's their preset. Now we're going to go into our Gerber section and we're going to click top copper. Deselect negative image if it's there. All you want to see is black traces of what the copper lines will look like. You also want to click export as a zip. Have a look at what your bottom copper looks like. Double check to make sure those thermals are in. Nothing worse than having this manufactured and the thermals weren't included. Because there's no way of actually ever connecting those once this is published. The profile shows you the board shape. Solder mask, top and bottom will just auto generate there to protect your board from your solder. And then we've got solder paste top and bottom. They will come much later when we use surface mounted components. But the big one I want to look at is silk screen top. Well, we can see that we've got the names, we've got our custom text because we've got silkscreen top layer 21 and layer 25. But we don't have layer 200 and layer 201, which is my logo. So to add your own layers, edit layer and just go and select what you need. I'll select these two. There we go, much better. Silkscreen bottom is just one. And as simple as that, we can go press process job. Let's name it Alec. PCB V1.0 and we're just going to select a location here. Episode 8 is fine and it's called that. Save. Save. Done. That is as simple as that. So let's now get onto PCBWay's website and show you how to upload that Gerber and in a couple of simple steps you're going to be in the checkout window sending your very first PCB off. Let's go press OK and load up Google Chrome. In your search bar or your URL, you just want to go pcbway.com and it will load up to its homepage. Create an account with them. If you can, you're going to get a couple of free coupons out of them and it's really helpful to get that. And if you can, try put get as many PCBs as you can together before putting your order in. That way you only have to pay shipping once. So let's get into the web page here. We've got a dialogue here called Instant Quote. This is all we're focusing on. And we want to press Quote now. Don't put in your length and width. Let's just go Quote now. You'll see an option here for quick order PCB and it's going to give you an option to add a Gerber file. We want to go and select our Gerber as a .zip file and it uploads it and it's already profiled it for us. It's 90 millimeters by 20 millimeters. It's already filled in everything that it needs, the circuit boards, width, thickness, how many layers. All we got to do now is do the cool stuff. I want to select the solder mask as black because I want it to be a black PCB. A white silk screen on the top for the text, no edge connectors, and I'm going to use HASL lead free. We don't have any vias, so we don't have to worry about that. As well as our Gerber file does this for us anyway, so we don't actually have to ever touch that. One ounce copper is fine. And look, I'll pay the little extra to remove the product number. So as simple as that, we uploaded a Gerber file that we created with a couple of clicks. We've selected the color because no one likes doing the hard work. We all like just doing the fun stuff and making things look nice. I've reselected the surface finish and I've just removed the product number. Select your type of shipping and go save to cart. And here it is in your cart for ready for review. And that's about it. You can now just go pay like you're doing a normal checkout. And all you got to do is wait a couple of days for your circuit board to show up. And that's what we're going to do. Is the next time you see me, we're going to have it in our hands and we're going to connect it to the electrical panel and get it working with DCS. Alrighty, welcome back. Here we are with our circuit boards and PCBWay has done an excellent job sending these in record time, even over the Christmas season. I put the order in when we were filming and then about two days later, they were shipped out and they arrived within four. So it took about six days all up to get these circuit boards and that's during the Christmas rush. So imagine what it's going to be like when it's not a festive season and it's just normal postage times. Well, let's go and remove this and actually have a look how lovely these look. Beautiful little box, you open up great packaging and they come wrapped up in a little bit of foam paper. And if you, if you have a look here, I've actually got, that's five. That's like 10 circuit board. I, I, I thought I only pressed five. Who knows? But we've got 10 electrical panels 
all here and the detail on them is incredible. If we have a look at the back, you can see I've done a little bit off camera after putting the order in. I just had to amend the order and I just put a little legend at the back there so we could see what those wires actually represented when we connected them. It's going to make it a whole lot easier because 12, 18 months time, you want to fix it up. You want to do a bit of debugging. It's going to be annoying to try open up Fusion again, work out what that schematic is. Let's just have a bit of detail on the circuit board. Well, let's go and pop one of these under here so we can see how we assemble it. And using a little bit of camera magic, we can go and recreate this with its pins already soldered in. That is very cool indeed. So let's go attach this to our board and get underway. We can take the nuts off. Rip that. And you can see this fits perfectly on here all because we used Fusion to align those holes real simple. No need for carrying dimensions across into other programs. Right. And the best thing about the DuPont connectors is they literally just slide on in. Just like that, they are all connected. So what do we need to do now? We've got to install our new circuit board. I'm gonna create another video just on soldering later on. I just want to show you how easy this is to change circuit boards. We want to now go and grab our connector that we've created. It's got the JST connector on the top that's going to connect to the circuit board. And then we've got a couple of DuPont pins that are going to go into the Arduino. Like I said, the reason I like these JST connectors is they have a bit of a click to them. So no matter how hard you try tug it, it's not going to come out. It's going to be a lot sturdier in the underneath of your panels. Oh, if you accidentally foul it, you're not going to rip it out. Let's grab our Arduino Mega and we're just going to go and connect them from pins four to pin seven. And we're going to pin the ground in like that. Beautiful. Let's jump on into Arduino now and I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what the code says. Because always, whenever we do Arduino until we're all competent with it, I'll always translate it for you. That way you can understand what Arduino is reading. So starting at the top, we've gone and declared our variables. They are all integers because they are whole numbers. Remember, an integer is a whole number. A float is a decimal point number, a floating number. Int left gen switch is connected to pin four. Battery switch A is connected to pin six. Switch B is five and the right gen switch is seven. We went and went file, examples, DCS BIOS and we use the IRQ serial example. That way it gave us all the defines and includes and the setups and the loops already written for us. It's saying we're going to include the DCS BIOS library. And like I said in the last episode, you want to put all your snippets between the include line and then the setup line. DCS BIOS, it's going to read a two position switch this time. Last episode, we read a three position. This is just a two position and you can see it reads to left gen switch, the game's left gen switch, and we have defined pin A as left gen SW. Battery switch is a three position switch. It is on and override. And then we've gone declared its pins there and another two position switch for the right gen. And then we've got our usual setup, which runs once, and that's going to tell the DCS BIOS library to run once. And then we've got the loop as well. So that's pretty much ready to go. Let's go upload and it's compiling. It's uploading. There we go. It is done. So let's jump on into DCS in an instant action. We're going to show you how this electrical switch works. But before we load up, we need to open up the shortcut that we created last episode, connect serial port. We're using serial port three, but remember don't go and press enter until the game is initialized so it can create the handshake successfully. Otherwise you're just gonna get an error saying it can't connect. Now we can go and open up DCS. So we've got the game loaded up. Let's get back into our COM port, press enter with three, Press space so we don't have to wait the five seconds and you can see the handshake has been connected because the code is running. Back into our game and let's go have a look. Battery switch on, showing both the U and E voltages. Back to off, 
override only showing the right hand side of the electrical gauge showing voltage. Right gen off, left gen off, right gen on, left gen on. It is looking pretty cool. So that is as simple as that. We went and designed a circuit board. We sent it to PCBWay. They sent it back within record time. It's installed and our game is functional. So I hope you got something out of this lesson. If you've got any questions, always shoot me a message or send me some comments. And I'm always willing to help out. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the year. I hope you had a great Christmas. And I will see you next year for episode nine. And we're getting real close to actually building the F-18 cockpit. The plans have been sent off. They're currently getting cut out. And I'm really excited for next year. So thank you for 2023. And I will see you next episode.